Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ethan Moy. I'm here with Coach B as part of the eighth episode of Coach B Weekly. Coach B, how are you? Doing great. Now, uh, coming off a big 83-42 victory against LIU Brooklyn, uh, and has been big on social media, all the different records you set. Let's start with the defense. Uh, the defense allowed three points in the first quarter, which is a school record. Uh, previously, re previous record was five, and they also held LIU Brooklyn to 19.6 percent from the field, which is also a record. So, uh, you know, how how exactly did it happen? We really got after it. I mean, it, after losing on Saturday, and it was such a tough loss for us. Uh, we didn't play our best basketball, and uh, you know we didn't push through some tough moments. Well, we really had to respond, and you know that Sunday we really got after it, and I had to get after people a little bit more mm -hmm. than I usually do, and you know sometimes that's tough to do, but you know I had to get after them a little bit more, and um, you know they responded, they responded really well, and I think our defensive effort and tenacity was was really uh, was really a, um, a product of that. You know, coming back down to earth and being focused on being accountable and going out there and playing as hard as we can uh, really was the reason why things, you know, seemed to be such, it seemed so tough for them to get better looks like as opposed to as in uh, previous games before where we started getting lackadaisical and we really pride ourselves on our defense. So coming out and, and establishing that tone was a big focal point when I talked to him beforehand in the locker room and on Sunday. And it was that we were going to set a tone early on. The tone was either going to be set in our favor, that we were going to be a, accountable, keep the ball in front of you, man-to-man -man defensive team, or we were going to be a team that just doesn't you know, have the, the heart to go out there and to compete at that level. And, and the players did a great job of responding, and we really set a tone early, and I was proud of them. Now, LIU's top two scores both were coming in with double-digit points per game on average, and you held them, or the team held them to uh, what was it, one of 20 from the field. Uh, can you just expand, you mentioned it before, but can you just expand a little bit on how or what exactly you did to help frustrate them? You know, I think we did a good job of keeping the ball in front of us. Okay. You know, there's two real big principles in our defensive philosophy is always keep the ball in front of you and protect your paint. Okay, those are very two very general philosophies, right. and there's a lot that goes on, and we tweak some things to do that. Um, but that was our general philosophy, and we executed our game plan to continue to have that for the most part of the game. And when LIU did break us down and get a look, you know that you know those moments were much fewer mm -hmm. than than they would probably like to have, and yeah. so we, we we kept them uncomfortable. I feel for the most part of that, uh, especially that first quarter, but from for the most part of the 40 minutes. And, um, you know, when you have that identity, you know, nobody wants to play you. Right. Uh, now, offensively, we obviously should be, we should talk uh, a little bit about Anna Nikki Stamalampru. She tied the school record for both points and field goals made, points with 39, field goals made with 15. Can you just expand about her performance? And did you kind of see it coming in like, hey, I feel like she's going to have a pretty good night? Well, she had such a tough day on mm -hmm. Saturday. You know, where, where she didn't shoot the ball well and right. she didn't play at the level all around mm -hmm. that she could play at. Right. And that's a big thing about Anna Nikki's performance last night is that it wasn't just the scoring. She you had know, nine rebounds. Nine rebounds. She had rebounds. three steals, two yep. assists. She yep. did a little bit of everything. Yep. And you look at out of those 39 points, how many times the ball touched three to four players' mm -hmm. hands down the floor. This wasn't an isolation kind of give her the ball and just let her go to work. There was none of that. Right. It was it was emotion, and we were playing together, and we were reading and, and reacting, and uh, that 39 points came in a very healthy way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very proud of the pace she played at. She played at a very good pace, um, and, you know, her effort and uh, leadership was very, very strong. And, um, you know, if you ask me, if you say, well, did you expect it? Well, I did. I expected, I wouldn't say that I expected her to go out and score 39 because with our team and our culture, you know, our shots come as they come. Yeah. You know, the, we take what they give us and we, and we work for good shots. We make reads. Mm -hmm. We put the defense hopefully in situations where they have to make quick decisions. And if it so be that Anna, Anna's the one that gets the look, then Anna gets the look. And she did a great job of allowing that to come to her. And uh, that 39 points was a team effort. You know, a lot of times when she caught and shot the ball, 
it was a nice pass and a good look getting her the ball on time and um, you know we had 20 assists mm -hmm. and, and only 13 turnovers so when you could almost get a two to one assist to turnover ratio as a team right. that's really strong not just your point guard your point guard you hold them more accountable mm -hmm. to having a little bit better of a standard yeah. but as a team to have almost a two to one assist to turnover ratio it just shows you how the continuity was working yeah. uh, sophomore guard Nia Adams she earned her first career start had seven points and three assists uh, what went into the decision to give her her first start? Well, you know, Nia has been working extremely hard in practice, and uh, she gives us a different look when it comes to how she gets out there and she can defend and how she gets to the rim and things like that. And, you know, as a team, you know, sometimes you need to joggle with things and see how things go, and, and effort is always going to be rewarded. Yeah. And that's really what that was. Nia's effort was very, very high for a while, and she had had some setbacks earlier in the year. She with, missed the first, like, 10 or so games with an injury. Uh, that's right. And she was battling through that, and that's difficult to do. And, you know, when, when someone comes to practice every day and, and continues to put the work in and, and want to earn her way back into getting more of a role, you know, you have to reward that. And if someone is, is not working as hard as they need to work, then you need to also realize that your role will be affected. And I've always been the type of person that whether you're a freshman or you're a senior, you got to continue to earn your, you know, earn your minutes, earn your role. And if Nia's doing a good job to earn those minutes in their role, she will continue to get opportunities. And that just goes for anybody from senior down to freshman. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's backtrack a little bit to Saturday, uh, the loss to St. Francis Brooklyn. You've had some battles between uh, Colonials and Terriers over the years. Uh, what do they do well, really, to frustrate? Well, you know, they, they're very well coached, and I've always said that Coach Thurston, John Thurston, is, is, is someone that I have a lot of respect for, and he does a great job, and I really appreciate the kind of culture that he has on his team, and they've always been so respectful to us, whether in a win or a loss, yeah. you know, remaining the same person. So I, I think a lot has to go in with what they do is that they play so hard and they're so consistent, mm -hmm. and he has a great system about how they understand what's expected of them. And I think that's really what bothered us is that, you know, when they, when they had defensive strategies and things that they were doing to tweak and, and, and bother us, you know, they did it really well, and we had to be tougher than we were to go against that kind of intelligence. And they play with a lot of intelligence. So, you know, they, you know, they, have, a, they have a strong game plan. Now, we did some things that broke them down and we missed some looks. You know, yeah. we, did, we did get some good looks mm -hmm. and I think that we bothered ourselves a lot in some ways too. Right. So without taking the credit away from what I'm telling you about what he deserves right. and his team, uh, we missed some good looks when we when we broke them down. And a lot of that had to do with our mental toughness on Saturday. We, didn't, we weren't mentally tough. You know, when you go into a game and things happen and they don't happen as planned, then you have to be tough enough to get through them and to continue to play at the pace that you can play at. You can't start second-guessing yourself and, and getting a negative and, and not giving it 100%. And I'm very, very tough with our players on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell them that you know, no matter what happens, I expect you guys to stay focused and, and to continue to work for the team. And uh, our, our energy went down on Saturday, and um, I give him the credit to, to, to putting us in that position. We just got to do a better job of of fighting through those adversity times. Now, uh, you have kind of a different slate coming up here Saturday and Monday. Uh, Saturday being away and Monday being at home. What's different in terms of uh, pregame prep for prepping like a week, for a weekend of away home split? You know, it's, it's a different routine for sure. Um, you know, what we have to do is we have to make sure that, you know, no matter what happens on Saturday, that we stay in our routine as much as we can when we come back and you know obviously we'll be sleeping in our own beds you know going into the second game which will be a little different but you just have to stay in your routine as much as you can mm -hmm. and prepare the same way and um, you know when we when we go on the road and we play two on the road you know we have that Sunday and that Monday to get ready mm -hmm. and most of it is in that Sunday um, and you never want to look ahead so you know when we play on Saturday that's always going to be our total 100 percent focus and once the game's over then we got to pick up and get over and 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 uh, get back into our routine about preparing for uh, monday and um you know we we just try not to look ahead on it you know at the end of the day we just want to stay focused on saturday and then once saturday is over our, our total focus is going to be to stay in our routine as much as possible and to get prepared for the next game and whatever that takes we will do i mean whatever that takes from a coaching staff all the way down to our players now, uh, lastly, like I mentioned, Saturday is at Wagner. Monday is against St. Francis. You here at home, uh, you know, two different styles there. Wagner under a new coach here. 
Uh, what needs to be done to come away with a pair of victories? Well, we have to make sure that we respond well from the kind of performance we had. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people will always talk about coming back from a, from a tough loss. Right. You know, how do you come back from a tough loss? How do you come back from a game like that? And, and sometimes people forget about the fact that there's also the flip side of the coin is how do you come back from a, from a nice win? Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes teams come back from losses way better they come back from wins because they get comfortable with they forgot about what made it a good win. Mm -hmm. What made that a good win is we played with a lot of energy and a lot of effort and a lot of toughness and we played hard and we played smart and we played very free. Mm -hmm. That's very important for us. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, if we forget about what set the table for that, then we'll struggle again and we'll keep seesawing. Yeah. So we've got to stay in our routine off of a good win like that without letting things now get loose again. We have to tighten up. You know, we have to tighten up our, our, our focus mm -hmm. and make sure that when we get out there, our practice this week is going to be what sets the standard for how we play on Saturday. We need to have a great week of practice. We need to come back in hungry. We need to iron out the things that we would iron out whether we won or lost. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be really the recipe for us to continue on and to grow and to become more accountable and become a better team is take a win and a loss in stride and continue with your routine and stay focused no matter if you lost a tough one or you won a big one. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be the story for Saturday. All right. Well, hey, uh, thank you once again for joining me and good luck this weekend. You're welcome, Ethan. Saturday's game against Wagner will be at 1 p.m. It can be seen on NEC Front Row, while Monday's game against St. Francis U is a special 2 o'clock game that also can be see seen on NEC Front Row.